These stories are inspired by the actual case files of the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. Well, there it is, our new house, in all its unfinished glory. It looks great, Dad. Come on, I'll give you the grand tour. Dad, I've already seen the pictures and the floor plan. And Dixie, since your mom didn't feel up to coming, at least you could pretend to be excited. Whatever. Let's just get this father-daughter stuff over with. Ta-da! And some power. Ah, oh, damn. It's just one thing after another. Look, honey, I gotta go downstairs, check the breaker box. Stay here. Paranormal occurrences can range from the mundane to the fascinating to the outright dangerous. Well, danger was the last thing on Blaine McAllister's mind, however, when he decided to build his dream house, a place to live out his vision of family contentment for years to come. But when the partially constructed dwelling started to behave as if it had a mind of its own, dreams quickly turned to horror. File number 34112, case manager Connor Doyle, day one. We've arrived to investigate the anomalous activity reportedly taking place at the future residence of a Blaine McAllister and his family. Preliminary interviews are underway. So, which one's Doyle? Professor Connor Doyle. We're with the OSIR. Yeah, heard you guys were coming by. Professor Kellerman at the university thought it was worth our attention. Sure, if you're into freak accidents. Oh, this is my wife, Debbie. Ma'am? We're a little shaken up by all this. What with Dixie having Yeah, that that's our daughter. She's not doing too well since um, the incident. Any idea what the cause of all this might be? I think it's just a run of bad luck. You know, contractors quitting, on-site accidents. This house is taking forever to finish. We thought with Blaine helping the architects design it, it would go... Yeah, look, you see, there's got to be a rational explanation for all this. So don't tell me I can't finish my house, well, our house, because it's haunted, you know? I, I don't buy that bull. Try telling that to Dixie. She's in the hospital, under observation. You know, it's strange how long it's taken. They've had some trouble with construction crews. We were the third team hired by Mr. McAllister. And after what happened, I mean, you couldn't pay me and my crew enough to go back to that place. I sold the McAllisters the land about, be about a year ago now. It was a lovely piece of property. I got it for a steal. They were gonna build a dream house on it. There was this one day, things just went nuts. You know, equipment uh, wouldn't run, or would start running by itself, or floating around. 
And there were these uh, bizarre noises, uh, howling, roaring sounds. And then the front door just exploded off its hinges just as Monty was coming in. <laughs> he must have flown 15 feet. And the, the floor around me got so hot, oh, the bottoms of my boots began to burn. But the last straw, Joey Hats, he's walking around the outside of the house, when all of a sudden he's up to his neck in this uh, stuff. It's like quicksand, you know, or mud, I don't know. I mean, we pulled him out just in time, but uh, the guy's lucky to be alive. Keep sharp and stay in eye contact. I don't want anyone alone. Whitman, Silva, run a scan for any possible toxic hazards. Yes, sir. Any readings yet? Negative. log update. Out of concern for the safety of my team and due to the volatile and extreme nature of the phenomena, I'm requesting permission to expedite protocol and begin an immediate environmental assessment. It's remarkable, you know, baseline results have returned to normal. And why the occurrences take place? Gravitational fluctuations, electrostatic discharges, background radiation drops off the map. It's pretty extreme. Not to mention an IR-210 projecting out of Whitman's hands and flying across the room. Ooh. Anton? Physiological assessments show nothing with the McAllister family that would account for the phenomenon. There is one point of interest, though. Debbie McAllister is expecting. Well, I guess congratulations are in order. Blaine doesn't know. I don't think so. He's in for a shock. They're going to have twins. Yikes. Really? Well, why wouldn't she tell him? I think the chaos of the situation, the uncertainty about the future of the home. Uh, possibly. What about overall family dynamics? Aside from the pregnancy, the stress levels are above average due to the condition of the daughter. She's still hospitalized, and she shouldn't be. It's worrisome. She's exhibiting a failure to thrive. Lindsay, what have you found? The property has changed hands three times over the past 80 years. Most recently, it was sold to the McAllisters. That was six years ago. When did the occurrences begin? Shortly after, but no report of anything strange by the previous owners. Background checks? The McAllisters have solid community ties. They're a low-risk factor for perpetrating a hoax. They're broke. Everything they have is tied up in the construction of this house. What about regressive hypnosis results? Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get permission from Blaine and Debbie to put Dixie under. It's understandable, considering what they say she experienced. I'll give her a little more time, then we'll try again. Now, Dixie, I'm going to take you back three weeks. It's May 28th, and it's about 6 p.m. Where are you? My dad and I are driving up to the construction site. Do you see the house yet? Yeah, it's a mess. Things are moving. It's getting so windy. What's happening? It's fine, Dixie. Just be calm. Please continue. There's someone in the middle of the wind. Can you tell us where is the middle of the wind? Upstairs. There's a shadow. It's rushing toward me. No, no! Dixie, calm yourself. Now I want you to slow everything down and tell me exactly what you see. It's right in front of me. What is it? It's someone, but I can't tell who it is. Wait, I can see someone. Who is it, Dixie? Who do you see? It's me, but I'm different. Different? I'm wearing glasses, my hair's shorter. I look almost like I'm older. All right, Dixie, you're doing fine. Now, I just want you to- She's scared. She's so scared. No! There's another shadow. It's coming for her. It wants to hurt Dixie, her. Dixie, calm yourself. Nothing is going to happen to you. Now, I want you to slow everything down again and describe to me the second figure that you're seeing. No, no, 
I can't tell. And there's more figures lying on the floor in the dining room. How many figures, Dixie? I think this should Two stop. Two or three, maybe. Please. But the big one She's isn't terrified. stopping. It's coming for me. It wants to hurt me. Oh, my God, Dixie, no! Dixie, come back now. File number 34112, initiating full environmental monitoring and surveillance and proceeding with extreme caution. This complaint is a full-scale level five. No investigator will be on site without a partner for more than five minutes. Due to the volatile nature of the phenomenon, I'm requesting that additional personnel be assigned to the case. Well, I haven't heard on that. Let me ask Doyle. Include that with the data pouch. Doyle, I'll be here. Did the analysis of the data at headquarters corroborate our findings? The residue levels are lower, but they concur with our findings. Uh, no conclusions. It's our job. Mm. How are Silva and Whitman? Well, we've got lacerations, concussions, some internal bleeding. They're recovering as anticipated, but uh, they'll still have to be hospitalized for a few more days. There's 77 separate accounts of unstable and destructive AKA in the last two days. And that doesn't even include all the testimonials from the various construction crews before we arrived. I've just been reviewing their accounts. And this big black figure, I don't know, like a shadow or something, blasting through the room and throws me against the wall. The worst thing is this high-pitched shriek. I still can't get that sound out of my head. His account was verified by several of his co-workers. Is there any pattern developing as to when the activity occurs? No consistency whatsoever, although it does appear to be building. The shadows figure prominently in everyone's testimony. Are there any first-hand sightings by our team? No, not yet. Although we've got the equipment in place. If something's out there, we'll get it on tape. Dixie described one of the shadows as an older version of herself. Exactly. I'm thinking that we should play out the PK angle. But there's no evidence to suggest that she's responsible for all this. Except her description. It might be more objective than we think. We need to better understand what she saw. Anton, how's she doing? Not improving. Keep an eye on her. All right, what's the next course of action? I've reinforced the exterior of the probe. Hopefully it'll withstand whatever the phenomenon can throw at it. What are we looking for? Ah, uh, fluctuations in air pressure, irregular seismic activity. It works. Put it in position. Okay, here we go. What was that? Pan right. The ambient temperature is fluctuating. Have you registered any kinetic activities? Celsius reading is dropping rapidly. 10 degrees? Minus 10? Minus 20? What's the exterior temperature surrounding the house? It's constant. 22 degrees centigrade and holding. The temperature decrease is only occurring inside the premises. Remarkable. Wait a minute. Are you picking that up? Registering strong electrical activity. We're recording this? Getting it. Try and pinpoint where the seismic activity is originating. Check this out. Temperature levels are now increasing. Exterior still constant. Interior plus 15, plus 20 degrees Celsius. Seismic activity contained at the first floor. It, it appears to be approaching the probe. Something's moving in there. There. Are we getting all this? We're losing our transmission. Seismic activity on top of the probe. Damn. <sighs> probe telemetry down. We've lost it. Case log update. Client's request termination procedures have been initiated. Acoustical, atmospheric, and nuclear flux technologies have been introduced to the environment. All elimination procedures have thus far proved unsuccessful, considering bridge procedure with OSIR AI specialists. Bring that the AI specialist? What's that? It's uh, an operative specializing in alternative information utilizing metaphysical techniques. Pardon me? <laughs> She's a psychic. Oh, come on. Her gifts are really quite remarkable. We've tested her extensively. Well, how can she help? 
We've had some success with these procedures in the past. Contact with the other side helps us develop non-mainstream scientific approaches. Well, look, I'm, I'm beyond questioning anything now. You just do whatever you have to do to make this thing stop. How's Dixie? She's getting worse. Debbie's worried sick about her. And I mean, physically sick, in fact. I was talking with Dr. Hendricks. Oh, yeah, all right. He feels that Debbie may be under some pressure. I'll say. He's talking about cutting our losses and dumping this place. So why don't you? Because we've always dreamed of owning our own home. What's really important to you, Blaine? Your house or your family? You're not in this alone. Go talk to your wife. There is a presence in the house. Several of them, in fact. But what confuses me is that I'm receiving no information from the past. That's extremely rare. Peter, what's your analysis of the seismic activity recorded by the probe? Well, here's the sound as we recorded it. And this is it sped up, with all the extraneous noises filtered out. Footsteps. Exactly. But coming from what or who? Dixie described what? Five figures? One of which was the older version of herself. Anton, it was definitely twins Debbie McAllister's having? Yeah, she's well into her first trimester. It's quite a shock for Blaine. Are you suggesting that all of this could be related to precognition? Well, I was unable to sense anything from the past, which leaves the future as a possibility. All right, all right, all right. So there's five shadow figures, five members of the McAllister family once the twins are born. Exactly. What if, in a parallel dimension or another timeline, the McAllister family moved into this house and lived there for several years? And then something happens. Um, a home invasion leading to multiple murders. Or worse, a family member flips out and goes on a killing spree. Where are we heading with this? Perhaps, somehow, the parallel family is trying to warn our clients... Not to move into this particular house. And Dixie is the messenger. Are we getting a signal yet? Monitors online. That's permanent. Recording. Audio and visual link up now. Affirmative. Thank you. Coming through loud and clear. Thanks. You're welcome. So anyway, Boris, I got some news. Uh, Debbie's gonna have twins. Twins? What's the due date? Uh, November. November? Ah, oh, that's amazing, Blaine. Yeah, so... You double size your family like that? Yeah. <laughs> can understand why I'm here. Hmm. Yeah, I can understand. I guess uh, the house isn't big enough anymore. Yeah, and Debbie wants to stay in town, you know, be closer to her parents. So what are you proposing? I take the property off your hands? You would be doing me and my family one hell of a big favor. Now, let's see what happens. Oh, I don't know. You know, the market on a house that size is dead. Please open! No. Yeah, but new housing starts are up about 30%, so it's only a matter of time. Time's money. No! <sighs> So make me an offer. You know, I don't think I can do any better than 10% under market value. He's changed his mind. No, Daddy, no!
You get all that? Affirmative, Donner. Well done. Well, it worked. Final log update. After the land transaction was finalized, we determined that the selling of the property by the McAllisters resulted in the disappearance of the phenomena. The home has since been sold to another couple, the Penfields. And though we've encountered no further kinetic phenomena, we will continue to monitor the property as per standard procedure. Case manager Connor Doyle out. Was this simply an extremely active poltergeist haunt case in which the McAllisters were being warned about dire events to come by future visions of themselves should they move into their dream house at 5214 Corvallis Crescent? Well, this is one speculation investigators could formulate. When the OSIR made it clear that his family's safety might depend on it, Blaine McAllister willingly sold the house. And Blaine learned the sometimes elusive but ultimately obvious truth that a dream home is not built with wood, brick, or stone, but rather on the foundation of love, the contentment and happiness of one's family. Come on, Adam, slow down. No way. Look, skinny dipping was your idea. My excellent idea. <laughs> well, not if Dad finds out we're AWOL. Hey, you telling me it wasn't worth it? See Sally and Janine? Huh? I guess. Look, if we keep going, we might get home for breakfast. Oh, this sucks. Let's cut through Layton's ranch. That'll get us home in 20 minutes. It's off limits. Now, so are Sally and Janine. They're not church-going girls, boys. <laughs> Hey, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. How's late never going to know? You come, little brother, or I'll leave you for the coyotes. Come on, you loser. Keep up. You sure we're going the right way? Sure, I'm sure. When you get over that rise, you look for Beacon's gas station. And we're home free. <laughs> you got it. Hey, did you hear that? What is it? Something's coming. Let's go. Run! The SETI Project, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, a worldwide network of radio dishes designed to receive any communication from outer space cultures if they exist. Now, despite the absence to date of any such messages and the repeated non-acknowledgement of actual contact by our North American military, we are continually confronted with reports of craft sightings, communications, and abductions associated with a variety of sentient extraterrestrial beings. When the OSIR was asked to investigate anomalous lights in Crescent County, Iowa, it found the bewildered residents' agitated state as challenging as the phenomenon it had set out to analyze. All right, Fred, what's going on here? I think you know, Jesse, after those kids were taken last week. Fred, we still don't know what happened last week. Now, I want all of you to move on out of here. There it is. They're back. What the hell? Number 52111, case manager Connor Doyle, initial case log entry. We're investigating a possible UFO sighting and a claimed alien abduction in Crescent County, Iowa. Our main contact is a sheriff, Jesse Weckel. I'm not sure what to think anymore, other than this town is going nuts. So there were multiple witnesses for each sighting. <laughs> Ma'am, you'd be 
Hard pressed to find somebody in this town who hasn't seen those damn lights in the sky. You saw them yourself? Oh, hell yeah. Although whether I saw northern lights or the gray come down to say hello, I saw something. Our contacts at the FAA confirmed that nothing was scheduled to fly over your airspace during the time of the sightings. No military flights or training exercises within 100 miles. Yeah, I've been down that it's a weather balloon road. I got nothing. So we only have visual confirmation. Not if you factor in the Keeler boys' story. Well, exactly. It's what happened to those boys that got the town all lit up. They're not talking now. <laughs> well, that's Chad and Adam. They know when to clam up. Oh, like misdemeanors. Normal behavior for kids that age stuck out here in the sticks. Your report says the doctor who examined them feels they underwent something traumatic. Well, they told everyone they were abducted by aliens and they've got the scars to prove it. Those boys were as good as scared as I've ever seen two kids get. Yeah, I've been waiting out there since those boys first got probed. I figured if those things came back again, we better be ready to defend our young. Well, it's clear and irrefutable that these vessels are from outer space. Otherwise, why would you folks even be here? Hmm? About a week later, they came back again. Circled the field again. But there were too many of us for them to try to make a landing. I'll be damned if I'm gonna let some alien take our children for their experiments. If there was something going on out in my land, I slept right through it. My wife and kids, too. I was thinking, maybe it was a flock of geese or car lights reflecting from the highway. Maybe just a couple of kids up to something. It's important to remember, they're clearly trying to tell us something. We must decipher the message. We're cutting through this field when it happened. Can it, man? They don't want to hear. Come on. This flying saucer came out of nowhere. We tried to run, but it was too fast. Want to look this way, please, guys? Look, admit it, Chad. It was amazing. Why don't we just tell the whole town? I was not. Shut up. Sheriff Weckel and Fred Hilliard carried them in here like two sacks of potatoes around 5 a.m. What symptoms did the boys present? Dehydration, disorientation. Both had injuries and pupil response time consistent with a serious concussion. I had to sedate them both and keep them under close observation. On the Glasgow Coma Scale? Lock seven, some type of uh, physiological trauma that affected their nervous system. Uh, first and second degree burns on feet and hands. And there's the gouge on Chad's shoulder. He said the aliens had taken a sample. Their dad's convinced it's an act to try to get out of some jam. What do you think, doctor? <laughs> well, like old Doc Klein used to tell us at Harvard, that's how the patient tells you it is. Case log update. After interviewing nearly a dozen witnesses, I've decided to expedite protocol and focus our attention on the land surrounding the sightings. We've established a 10 square mile perimeter. It's hoped that a thorough on-site inspection in conjunction with physiological assessment of the subjects will help us determine what happened here. I've charted all the reported UFO sighting to date, ran a computer model. They could have been anywhere within this 20-mile square area. So unless the boys tell us more, I can't accurately assess the event's location. No power lines, no water towers, nothing that could be perceived as a UFO. There are some fallow spots. Other than that, there's nothing out here but corn, barley, and soya beans. No odd geophysical elements, no anomalous energy fields. Oy. You think any combination of this vegetation could cause hallucinogenic effects? You got nothing more than your basic agricultural staples out here. You put all this stuff together, you'll get nothing but a... Really healthy breakfast cereal. <laughs> exactly. Do you have any insomnia, shortness of breath? Migraine headaches? Yeah, all of the above. Chalk it up to big alimony and a 24-hour-a-day job. <laughs> How's your night vision? Any um, clouding or dimming of peripheral vision? Some. You seem to know what you're looking for, Doc. Yeah, I've seen symptoms like this before. Where? In people who lead stressful lives. Or in other UFO freaks, right? I wasn't abducted by a UFO, Doc. Those boys were. Or they say they were. God, now I'm believing this whole UFO thing. Sheriff, you're a little overworked, but otherwise you're in fine shape. That's what my wife told me. The day she left me. Where were you? We were cutting through this field when it came out of nowhere. It felt like something was pushing us down. The lights were blinding, and 
The air smelled funny, like after a thunderstorm. And then they knocked us out. Zapped us, I guess. Who did? The aliens. Is this true, Chad? When I woke up, man, I heard all over. It must have happened. Do you still feel sick? I feel better now, but after it happened, I thought I was gonna die. Adam, I'm talking to Chad. Are you sure that the wounds you received came from that ordeal that evening? This wasn't an ordeal, man. We were abducted by aliens. Don't you get it? Chad and Adam registered high cardiovascular and neurological responses during questioning. They're hiding something. But I can't pinpoint exactly what. Looks like they were in pretty rough shape to me. Yes. Aside from cuts and lesions, there's evidence of dysrhythmia on both boys. But a regular heartbeat can be inherited genetically. True enough. But the pattern of the lesions suggests some radiation burns. I'd learn more if I could regress the boys to a hypnotic state, but they won't cooperate. Their father signed the release forms. Chad and Adam refuse to acknowledge their parents' authority, legal or otherwise. We'll get what we can from other sources. Sandra, anything further from your scans of the surrounding area? Minor traces of pesticide use. I've sent soil samples to headquarters for further analysis. Tasha? Background checks into the area are fairly typical so far. Strong interactive community, agrarian-based economy. No previous record of phenomena before these incidents. Suddenly half the town turns up for a free light show. What about people passing through, migrant workers? All fairly closed mouth. I think they were more concerned I might work for immigration. All swore they saw nothing. Reduce the perimeter. Prepare full monitoring and surveillance. I want to know if anything comes within five miles of this field. We've begun monitoring of the area in the hopes of finding some evidence of what has visited this site twice in the past three weeks. In the eight days since initiating surveillance, we've picked up nothing. With the help of the sheriff's department, the area's been secured from civilian interference. Sorry, Fred, the road's closed. We got a flood from an irrigation overflow. Sheriff, you might be able to fool everyone else with these lies, but we know the truth. You and the government are up to something. It's got to do with those UFOs. Fred, the road is closed. That's all there is to it. Now turn the vehicle around and go home. This had better work. Thank you. That's Des Moines air traffic has clear skies, no scheduled flights, military or civilian. It's the same as when the other sightings occurred. I have something. Long-range bogeys coming in from the northwest at five miles in closing. How many? Two. Coming in low, 20 feet off the deck. Tasha, track them on the Litton scope. Do we have anything on radar? We have target lock. Confirmed. Two bogeys zeroing in on our position. Coming fast. I can't identify them. Night vision image isn't clear. Radar tracking systems are down. I don't understand this. They must be jamming us. We still have visuals. Launch the aerial probe. I want identification now. Probe is airborne. Hold on. I've lost remote scans. Uh, long range sensors are blind. Something's definitely interfering with our tracking system. Anything from the probe? It disappeared. What the hell is going on out there? Anybody? Case log update. We are currently attempting to retrieve the remote aerial probe lost during last night's operations. It remains doubtful as to whether the probe holds any information which could help us identify the two UFOs we tracked before our instruments were jammed. It's breaking up on me. Does your equipment ever work properly? Aha, uh -huh. over here, about 20 yards. So. You didn't see anything in the sky last night? No lights? I'm sorry, uh, I saw nothing. I got it. Jeez, what a mess. This thing sure took a beating. What could have caused this?
<coughs> You're right. Sounds like a bronchial infection. Uh, don't worry about me. How long have you had this illness? <coughs> Too long. Many of us are sick. But we must work for our families. <coughs> Let's get him into the lab, run some tests. Dr. Hendricks would know for sure, but he needs a ventolin inhaler and some antibiotics. Yeah, come on, bud. <coughs> Are they? Luis has a severe chest infection, and his friends. We found large amounts of chemical-based toxins in their system. I haven't seen anything like this since Kurdistan. Any trace of narcotics? Well, that's hard to say. Connor, they've been exposed to something. Sandra's trying to identify it. Could it have come from the field? Possibly. Luis says he doesn't know where it could have come from, but the people he works with, most of them, have the same illness. And they're all here working illegally, so no one will speak up. Tasha, I want you and Peter to go on a covert sub-operation at the exact location of the sightings. Let's see if we can make a positive ID of any UFOs using remote sensing equipment. Do you want us to continue operation without permission from the landowner? For now. We need visual confirmation directly from the site. OK, if the UFOs return. All right. Yeah, I was just thinking about what those two boys went through. Be careful. Don't worry. Oh, and I'll take care of Axon. Lab One, this is Tasha. We're entering the east quadrant of Leighton's Field. Let's send up the scanners over here. Okay. Tasha, don't move. Don't move. Okay. What is it? Oh, yeah, there it is. Very high energy field emissions. All right, stand back, stand back. Whoa! Wow. That's not very neighborly, Mr. Layton. Oh, downright rude, I'd say. Chad say something like the air smelled funny, like after a thunderstorm? Ozone. There must have been 200 volts running through it. Those kids must have got a hell of a shock. Well, that would explain the boys' irregular heart rate, and the barbed wire would account for Chad's wounds, but it still doesn't account for their reluctance to cooperate. I talked to the girls the Keeler boys were with the night of their claimed abduction, and it turns out they all indulged in a little homemade jungle juice. <laughs> Mr. Keeler's a devout Baptist. He won't be too pleased to hear that news. That's what they were trying to hide. As far as the boys were concerned, this uh, encounter with an electrified tripwire could qualify as an alien abduction. But that still doesn't explain the rest of the sightings. Movement! Connor, we've got movement! Activate remote scans. I have a target lock. Two heat sources closing fast at three miles due north by northwest. Peter, we have double bogeys headed in your direction. Do you have visual contact at this time? Negative, Lab 1. Nothing in the sky. Hold on. Affirmative. Lab 1, I have a visual on two UFOs coming out of the northwest, low on the horizon. Two heat trails and night vision is detecting burnout. Oh, geez, they're really booking about 20 feet off the deck, closing fast. Whoa, those are the brightest any collision lights I've ever seen. Peter, Tasha, can you identify it? Please repeat, Lab 1, you're breaking up. We can't hear you right now, there's too much interference. Can you identify the UFO? Peter, do you copy? I need visuals on this now. Run sound and picture through the computer. Working on it? I've got a lock. We have an ID match on the UFOs. Helicopters, Bell Jet Rangers, two of them. Why didn't we ID them before? They appear to be modified for night flying and stealth runs. Five, one, two, five. We have cold emission coming from the IFOs themselves. Looks like they're emitting some kind of liquid. <laughs> they're crop dusting. We gotta get out of here. Let's run Come for on. cover. Hold on, they're breaking pattern, heading out southeast at 150 knots. Winkler, keep them in your sights. Where are you going? After. What's the status of the field agents? 
You've been seeing what I've been seeing? It's like we found your UFOs. But what are we waiting for? Let's go. Wigthor, I'm traveling with the sheriff. Keep us pointed in the right direction. We have visual contact. They're heading due south. Affirmative. We have both of you on our screens, but might have a problem. Go ahead. Tracking starting to break up. I estimate them to be out of range in less than a minute. And we're gonna run out of road in a hurry. Doyle, you okay? Winkler, we've lost them. It's up to you. Fire up the imaging laser radar tracking system. I've lost them here. They're out of range. ILR status. Any second now. Confirm I have both aircraft on my scope. Heading due southeast about four kilometers away and slowing down. Due southeast four kilometers. Excellent work. We're on it. What? Copters. Who'd have thought? I'll have two squad cars meet us there. I just put out a warrant for the arrest of Kurt Layton, the man that owns this land. I believe running illegally modified aircraft without clearance is a federal offense. So is using banned pesticides. I've analyzed those pesticides. Turns out to be toxaphene smuggled in from Mexico. Pretty deadly stuff. You know, he put stealth modifications in the helicopters, flew in low and jammed all radio transmissions to cover the operation. These guys were good. You mean somebody trained them? Oh, yeah, very well. But why go to all that trouble just to dust crops? His acreage was dying. His corn was infested with earworms, resistant to most pesticides, except toxaphene. Yeah, so much for the UFO convention. Now you can tell the boys in the rest of the town what they really saw. <laughs> if they want to know what they really saw. Final case log entry. Kurt Layton has been arrested and charged with illegal use of aircraft and deadly chemicals. The farm workers were all treated for various ailments caused by the pesticides. Everyone affected has made a full recovery. Case manager Connor Doyle, out. Sometimes the most extraordinary occurrences have the simplest explanations. These teenagers weren't abducted by aliens and UFOs. No, this was human greed, coupled with a blatant and criminal disregard for the health, welfare, and stability of an honest, hardworking community. No ET or flying saucers here. I'm Dan Aykroyd for Sci Factor.